How's it going, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of the Math Step Back Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Trigg. You've got me solo today, uh, but we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, the trade market in the NBA has been stagnant for the last probably two months, if not completely two months, the better part of two months. Uh, that seems to be changing uh, the closer we get to training camp, which starts next Wednesday, and then, you know, the uh, media day stuff will be Friday, and next thing you know, we have preseason, and we're going to have this thing rolling at, at full steam here pretty soon. So, uh, we have a couple of rumors to go over, but before we do any of that, I just want to thank everybody who has taken the time to hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube has been uh, just on fire this entire summer, and I feel like that's mainly because, you know, we we didn't take the summer off. <laughs> we, we just kind of plowed through with, uh, with FIBA content and other stuff, and, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that after, uh, you know, we didn't do much on YouTube uh, prior to this year just because of, uh, you know, a lot of different reasons, bandwidth, uh, my actual uh, Wi-Fi used to not be what it was. So uh, shout out to Starlink. It's been a lifesaver uh, living in a rural rural area uh, and having good Wi-Fi for one. So that's that's one of the big, big differences. But anyway, uh, really appreciate all of you who have done that on YouTube. I appreciate all of you who listen on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those other places uh, where you get your pods. So uh, thank you, guys. It's much appreciated. Uh, we do have some T-shirts coming up soon. If you follow me on Twitter, at Dalton underscore Trig, uh, you've already seen the most recent uh, T-shirt that we dropped that features Luca and Kyrie. Uh, so that one is already available on our uh, T Public website. Now, there's a couple of other shirts that are going to be available here in the near future uh, that aren't going to be on our tea public website th th these are going to be like directly from uh, map step back they're going to be you know shipped directly from me uh, instead of having somebody else handle all that so now what what comes along with all that is it's going to take a little bit longer you know to actually get the shirts but uh, I've got a Dallas basketball.com shirt which you can see on the screen now, uh, the logo for that. So that's what's coming uh, in the near future. Uh, I've been wearing a few myself, you know, sample shirts. And, uh, you know, I think it's kind of fitting that the, the basketball in the background, you know, it's blue and green like we love with the Mavs, but it also kind of resembles a globe and our, you know, with our coverage being worldwide pretty much, you know, uh, I thought that was that was really fitting. So then obviously you have the, the classic ha cowboy hat there too. So really excited about these. Uh, they're going to be in comfort colors, uh, shirts, which, you know, are very durable and, um, you know, can withstand uh, a lot of stuff over the years and still hold up. So super excited about that. Also, uh, and I'm wearing it right now, so I'm going to try to get it to where you guys can see it, but uh, these Dirk Hall of Fame memorial shirts uh, that I, you know, I designed this. Uh, basket, it says Basketball Royalty, Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, August 12th, 2023. And then you've got Dirk's number in the background with, you know, keywords like loyalty and stuff like that going across it. And then you have the silhouette with a golden outline of Dirk doing his one-legged fade. Uh, I'm going to also be providing these uh, for sale, but none of the none of this is gonna there 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 will be no you know profit for me on this uh, shirt like it would be on the other ones. I, all the proceeds for this Dirk shirt are gonna go directly to the Dirk Nowitzki Foundation. Uh, so when these become available, if you're interested, just know everyone that gets bought, you know you're you're helping a a great cause because it, every bit of that money is going to go to the Dirk Nowitzki Foundation. So, okay, guys, I uh, appreciate y'all joining me on this 
this Friday. We finally made it through a long week. Uh, it's the final day before the weekend, and then, you know, we'll jump back into uh, a football phase, college Saturday and NFL Sunday. But we do have some math stuff to talk about. And like I said, the NBA trade market has been slow, but it's picked up here lately. Uh, we had a report that, you know, Damian Lillard, uh, he, the, you know, the Blazers are tr attempting uh, to trade him before training camp gets started. So we will see if they're successful in doing that or not. It seems like they've balked at every trade offer they've gotten throughout the summer. And honestly, I'm not sure if anybody has really offered anything of substance except for Miami. And Miami is probably not putting their best foot forward because they know that, <laughs> that Lillard only wants to play for them. So uh, that's why, you, you know, it's, it's almost like Lillard – kind of backed himself in a corner uh, when he only mentioned one team. When guys make trade, you know, even Kyrie Irving uh, last summer when he demanded a trade for the first time with the Nets, he had a list, you know. He had the 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 Mavs, the Lakers, and there was another team. Maybe it was the, maybe it was the Suns. I don't know. Uh, but, but he had a list of three teams. <laughs> so... You know, at least he gave the Nets a little bit of wiggle room there and, you know, to have the opportunity for uh, some competition when it comes to trade offers. But when you say you're going to play for one team and one team only and it's like, oh, well, if you trade me to the Boston Celtics, for example, uh, I'm just not going to play and I'm going to request a trade from them to the Miami Heat. You know, that's that's just a bad look uh, on Damian Lillard's part. That, that shows that uh, – you know, maybe, maybe he's not the the you know the Dirk like person we thought he was before all of this. It's really crazy. Like his reputation has really just like tanked in one off season. It's really crazy how that can happen so quickly, but it has. Uh, but anyway, you know, if if Dame does get traded, there's been speculation about you know could the Mavs be a third team in such a trade. Uh, and the most common speculated part of that is the Mavs potentially getting Tyler Hero. Uh, now, obviously, the Mavs don't really – I mean, they don't need Tyler Hero right now uh, because you still have Tim Hardaway Jr. on the roster. You have Jaden Hardy. Uh, you know, Hero is making north of $30 million a year. Um, and, you know, he, he's good. I mean, he's good. He can score the ball. Uh, he doesn't play great defense, although he, you know, has the ability to put forth an effort in that category. Uh, I guess that's the nice way of putting it. So it really doesn't make sense for the Mavs to get involved there unless, unless you have something where Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to uh, Miami where he's from, and, he, you know, he's been connected to the Heat before. Uh, you could have something with him going to Miami. Uh, you could have something with, you know, Rashawn Holmes going out if, you know, uh, the, the Mavs, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but, you know, the Mavs tried to retrade Rashawn Holmes immediately after they acquired him, uh, you know, to, to try and get DeAndre Ayton on draft night. And, again, we'll get into all that. But, you know, if you could do something like that to where you're clearing out enough space to justify taking in Tyler Hero's contract and you've gotten off of Tim Hardaway Jr., it's like, okay, well, you know, he's Hero's making 10-plus million more than, than what Hardaway is. But, you know, he's really good. He averages 24 points a game. And, you know, he – he's 24 years old. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's still young. I mean, there's still an opportunity for him to grow. And so, I, I mean, look, I don't think it's likely that the Mavs end up doing something like that. But, you know, with all the rumors surrounding Tim Hardaway Jr. over the last few years and his connections to Miami and all that stuff, I just, I don't know. I, I, I could see something like that happening. Um, 
Now the pieces would be t- now if if Hardaway is going to Miami, that makes it really tough because you know Miami would already be receiving Damian Lillard and his huge contract. So the moving pieces, I'm not sure how that would work. It would be more practical if Hardaway was going to the to the Trailblazers in in a three team trade like that. So again, I don't think it's likely, but it's at least something to keep an eye on as we get closer to training camp because. Uh, you know, the Mavs have some pieces that could make it possible for them to be a third team in that situation. So uh, another guy uh, that has been rumored uh, to be, well, that could be traded here pretty soon and also could be a cleaner trade match for Tim Harwood Jr. is Indiana Pacers' Buddy Heald. Uh, you know, he's a Dallas native. Uh, he he actually lives in Dallas during the off seasons and does his workouts there and everything is what I'm told. So, uh, you know he's he's been one of the best three point. He has the most made three pointers in the NBA out of everybody over the last five seasons. Uh, now you know he doesn't average huge points. You know, 16, 17 points a game, but he shoots 45 percent from the field. Um, you know, uh, well, hold on just a second. I think I just mixed that up. I think. No, I'm right. Yeah, 45.8% from the field, 42.5% from three, and 16.8 points a game, five rebounds, three assists. So it's not like he's a superstar player, but, you know, he shoots – at a superstar clip, which makes him valuable. Now, the defense, again, just like was the issue with with Tyler Hero is lacking. But, you know, I think when you shoot that good, there's always going to be minutes for you. There's always going to be a chance for you to be a difference maker. So, uh, Buddy Heald on the Mavs. And the reason I think this works, I wrote a piece about this on DallasBasketball.com. Uh, and you know, I, there was, there was a little bit of pushback on it. Oh, why would the Pacers do this and all that? You got to understand Buddy Heald is on an expiring contract. He has a 19, he's on a $19 million expiring contract. And the reason that the Pacers are working with him to find a trade right now is because they can't come to terms on a contract extension. So, if they don't come to terms on an extension, then you go through the season with him only expiring, and you're basically, you know, risking him walking in free agency, unrestricted free agency next summer for nothing. So that's the situation the Pacers are in. If you're not going to agree to a contract that Buddy Heald wants, and then, you know, he's got that in the back of his mind now. Like, okay, well, they didn't want to give me the money that I wanted, well, I'll just leave in free agency next summer. So, and you know, if other teams know that, plus him just being on a one-year deal, you know, you're not going to get much back for him. So my reasoning behind it is, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. is obviously not the player that Buddy Heald is, but the production isn't that far off. You know, uh, you know Tim Hardaway Jr. still averages 14 points a game, and, you know, his overall field goal percentage isn't great, a little over 40%. But, you know, he's a, he's a 37 38% three-point shooter on high volume, too. So, you know, I think uh, that, you know, if the Pacers want to get similar production from what, you know, Buddy Heald provides while having more contract control, too, because Tim Hardaway Jr., not only does he make less than Buddy Heald uh, does this year in particular, you know, Buddy Heald's making $19 million. Tim Hardaway Jr. makes around $17.8 uh, this year or something like that. But, you know, Hardaway's contract is descending. So next year when Hardaway's on an expiring contract, it'll be $16.2 million. Um, So, you know, that's, that, that's my reasoning for it. You get similar production – you know, on slightly less efficiency from Hardaway. But you get another year of contract control, and you don't have to worry about losing Buddy Hill for nothing. And the Mavs have, uh, you know, a handful of second-round picks now from from the moves they did this summer uh, to where, you know, they could throw in a, a second-round pick if needed. 
you know, I, I don't think I don't think Buddy Hield is a guy the Mavs would give up a first round pick for, especially given his his contract situation and all that. But you know, second round pick you could probably warrant uh, an upgrade like that. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, if you disagree or if you agree, let me know on Twitter. We can talk about it further uh, aside from just, you know, me ranting about it on the pod. But, um, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't help the Mavs overall need of improving rebounding. <laughs> but, uh, you know, anytime you can upgrade from a decent shooter to an elite shooter, like that, and then they already have Seth Curry on the roster from signing him in the offseason, put those guys, you know, separately, not together because of the defense, but, you know, in different spurts, you have both of those guys around Luka and Kyrie. That is going to be a nightmare uh, for, for other teams around the league because, I mean, how are you going to stop it? You have – you <laughs> you finally put reliable elite shooters around two of the best uh, ball handlers in the league. So, you know. I think it would work. But anyway, uh, the one I told you we would eventually get to here is uh, DeAndre Ayton. So as we know from earlier in the summer, our guy Mark Stein, he reported that, you know, the Mavs attempted uh, to trade for DeAndre Ayton uh, during draft night. And that reported offer that the Mavs gave to the Suns was – Tim Hardaway Jr., Rashawn Holmes, and JaVale McGee. And reportedly, you know, the part that the Suns really balked at was McGee being included in that deal. Well, McGee's no longer part of the picture because the Mavs waived him a few weeks ago. Uh, so now you have to wonder if they can, you know, reapproach the negotiation table and say, okay, well, can we do it with just Tim Hardaway and Rashawn Holmes? Or if, you know, according to uh, uh, phoenixsports.com, you know, they they rehashed the Mavs' offer from draft night that Stein talked about and said that their sources, their, their son sources called the offer uh, as being underwhelming uh, and then went on to say, let me see here, yeah, Okay, so phoenixsports.com went on to say it would take a compelling offer to get the Suns to reconsider their stance on Aiton. Not only would Phoenix seek a starting caliber big man to replace him, but they'd also need additional assets, either a young player with potential who could also contribute right now on a contender, draft compensation to help refill their empty cupboard, or both. So that is that's that, that's you know Phoenix's stance on Aiden right now. Uh, now Rashawn Holmes, I feel like could be considered a starting caliber center based on what he did uh, with the Sacramento Kings before they got uh, Demantis Sabonis. So I mean, you know, it's, it wasn't reported that the Suns balked at at uh, at Holmes being included in that initial offer that happened on draft night, it was, it was McGee. So, you know, with McGee no longer in the picture, uh, you could have Holmes as a, as your starting center with Phoenix and you could have DeAndre Ayton, uh, get a, a new area, a new, what's the word, a new change of scenery, which is what he, you know, greatly needs. And it, it seems like that what he really wants, like if he, if he was content being in Phoenix, I don't know if we'd even be having these conversations, you know, at the end of September with training camp right around the corner. Or so, um, but the only thing missing from that is the Mavs would either have to give some draft compensation or a, a young player or both. And, you know, uh, if the Mavs are unable to come to a contract extension agreement with Josh Green, do they consider – trading him i mean even if they don't have an agreement with with green right now he'd be a restricted free agent next summer so they could just wait it out and you know whatever offer whatever better offer green thinks he can get the Mavs can just match it uh and go from there so it just depends on if they would want to play the restricted free agency game or not 
Um, it also depends on, you know, just how much they see in DeAndre Ayton at this point. You know, he just turned 25 this summer. Theoretically, he should just now be entering his prime years, uh, you know, in the NBA. So it's been reported that the Mavs really like DeAndre Ayton, and they have for some time over the years. But, uh, you know, it's, it's – where do you draw the line there? Because, you know, you know he's limited. You know, he may, he's going to make an average of $34 million per year over the next three seasons. Uh, as, as good as he is, you know, all of his physical tools and, you know, what he is able to do right now as a starting NBA center, he still has limitations that makes, you know, that would make anybody second guess having him on the books for, for that much money. So, you know, that's something you have to weigh – is is trading for eight and worth losing, you know, a 22 year old guy who's a versatile defender and he's getting better and better every year in green. So I don't know if they would do that. Uh, but the alternative to that is you probably have to trade another first round uh, draft pick, a future first, which the Mavs, like the Suns, I mean, that, well, uh, the Suns are completely empty. The Mavs are not. They've they've got a couple of uh, picks they could trade. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if they would want to hamstring them. If you're, if you're going to trade a first-round pick for Aiton, you are pretty much locking in your future to Luka, Kyrie, and Aiton. You don't have any more flexibility with picks for, you know, the rest of this decade. Uh, if you do something like that. So it can be done, but, you know, the Mavs have to decide, okay, well, is it <laughs> is it worth it? Is it worth it for Aiton, or do we need to wait for something bigger, you know, down the line that's worth putting, you know, pairing our remaining available first-round picks and some of our young players like Green and whoever else for, for a bigger opportunity? Like Giannis Antetokounmpo, who has made <laughs> who has made waves in the news multiple times this summer, you know, voicing his uh, dissatisfaction with the Bucks, and you know, it's uh, everybody is on Giannis' watch now. Uh, not that the Mavs have, you know, the draft assets to compete with a team like the Pelicans or the uh, the Knicks or even the Thunder if they wanted to get involved with with something like that. But uh, as we know. You know, stars, especially stars that are in their prime uh, and are as accomplished as what Giannis has done, uh, they control what they do. So it, it's just a matter – it's not so much about the assets in the Giannis situation as it is what does Giannis want. Because, you know, if he if he's looking around, he thinks, hey, uh, I want to play with Luka. I want to play with Kyrie. Uh, he, he loves Jason Kidd. He called him a genius the other day when asked about Kidd on a podcast he was on. So, you know, hey, if he wants to end up playing in Dallas, that's where he will ultimately be. But, uh, you know, uh, the eight and stuff, it could still very much be alive for the Mavs. They just have to determine where they're willing to go uh, in a renegotiated offer from where they were on draft night. And who knows? I mean, maybe the Mavs are just uh, content with going into this season with uh, Rashawn Holmes. I mean, he's, he's got a lot to prove. Mark Cuban said he could end up being one of the most underrated pickups of the offseason uh, during summer league. So, I mean, from that talk, it sounded like they were, you know, planning on having him on the roster for opening night. Uh, you have Derek Lively who might not be ready to start just yet, but he has a lot of physical tools that should make him successful. He's being tutored daily by Tyson Chandler and all the other Mavs coaching staff. So uh, maybe the 19-year-old can surprise people and be more of a factor than than many realize, you know, heading into his rookie year. So, uh, But we'll just have to see. I mean, a lot of stuff. This last week between now and training camp and then even between training camp and the, and the start of the season, uh, uh, next month around yeah this time next month is when the start of the season is you know a lot can happen a lot can happen and it can happen quick 
Uh, but whatever happens, we will have you 100% covered, not only on this pod, but uh, on DallasBasketball.com as well. So, guys, appreciate y'all joining me today, uh, letting me ramble for about 25 minutes now. Uh, I will be back early next week with my guy Drew Johnson, um, and then later in the week I'll have my guy Grant Afseth on here as well. Uh, but we are cranking back up the content. We normally try to do one pod a week uh, throughout the off season on here, but once the season starts, we crank up the volume. We're we're doing multiple multiple pods uh, per week, and then during the season, I try to do a you know a daily update based on what's going on around the NBA. So appreciate it, guys. Be sure to like, rate, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms. Again, thank you all for hitting that subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, it has been an amazing summer over here. We're trying to get to 10,000 subs before uh, the start of the season, which I th- I'm pretty sure we will do. It, it's looking likely uh, just a – it's a huge milestone for us. So thank you, guys. Uh, be sure to leave a review on Apple Podcasts for future giveaways. Uh, again, we are going to have these DallasBasketball.com T-shirts – Uh, available very soon. Uh, They will be one of the first T-shirts we do the giveaways for because, you know, I've been waiting on these. (laughs) I've been designing and waiting on all these shirt uh, opportunities for like the last two to three months. It has been a slow process, but we're finally getting to the point where I'm going to have the physical shirts (laughs) and we can finally do uh, these giveaways. So I appreciate y'all staying with me. Uh, That is going to happen um, and again, I'm doing this as well. If you like this, this Dirk uh, Hall of Fame memorial uh, shirt that I I put together, I'm going to be you know selling these to the general public as well. And again, like I said, all the proceeds, uh, every cent is going to be going uh, to the Dirk Nowitzki Foundation. So uh, I just feel like you know uh, as much as as Dirk has done for me personally over the years, um, you know, I, I, you know, it's the, it's the least I can do. Um, I, I really just wanted to do something to, you know, ha- not only just have a nice shirt to wear to, you know, remember such a great moment for Dirk this off season when he was inducted into the hall of fame, but, you know, to give back to and, and help his cause. So, I appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great, relaxing weekend, and we'll see you next time. Y'all have a good one.